Hey, welcome to really what is my first ever Photoshop tutorial. Uh, I'm not actually an expert on Photoshop, but I found it a uh, pretty cool little feature, uh, which was what I think is my own development on this. And it's helped me to create um, some pretty nice looking pictures. And uh, I thought I'd share it. It can help a few uh, other game designers and so on out there. So uh, one of the things I've just created is uh, this sample book here my game Infected RPG and uh, if I just increase the display performance there see it comes up it looks pretty nice so it's got this nice splatter effect along here and it's sort of like a watercolor feature um, sort of looks like it it bleeds onto the page <clears throat> what I particularly like is uh, is how it sort of fades in certain parts you can see around there so uh, personally I really like it a few other people asked me how I did it and so I thought the best way to do it to show you would be to uh, do one. So on the main copy of the book, I'm uh, now relaying out, um, seeing as it's going to be a little bit different to the other one, uh, seeing as some of the art will go in different places. What I want to do is get this guy here. This is an infected that's going to go in the book, and he looks pretty scary, but I really just want his face, and I want it to be a large picture over here, or a fairly large one, I'm thinking around there and uh, I want it to come out as a splatter effect, so I'll show you how I do it. First up, I unlock this. I uh, make a new layer. I put that underneath, and what I do is I make sure that my bucket tool is white, and then I just put that on. Now, you won't see anything at first, but this is just going to help us to uh, see the changes that we've made, and we'll not be seeing that in the end result. So now, I uh, downloaded some very nice Photoshop brushes, uh, you see it's this weird spongy looking effect here and you can download this from a link that I'm attached uh, it's a free download for Photoshop it's pretty cool and um, it's one of the major reasons why I like Photoshop is because there's so many really cool brushes I've also got a link in there on how to download the brushes and actually upload them to the right file if anyone's got any questions always you can shoot me an email or comment on the uh, video now with this guy uh, what we want to do is add an alpha channel See how that pops up, that little white square there? That's actually, uh, it does a weird thing. If I make my bucket tool black, and see how that's selected there, and I go back there, it wipes it out entirely. Now, what we're seeing is the layer below. See that if I take it off, it just goes to the upper channel. So it's gone, the whole thing's gone, uh, which is awesome, actually. Now, the thing is, what we're going to do is we're going to get our... Uh, brush here. We're going to make sure we've selected the right brush here. Okay. Uh, now, if you can't find um, the brushes, um, you should be able to get them off uh, one of these areas up here. As I say, I'm not an expert, but I did find this somehow. And uh, generally, if you if you look, you can find those things uh, after a little while. So now, if I paint it white, you'd think it'd just be white, right? But still having this selected. Be careful not to select this one over here or this one down here, but the, the upper channel. See that? Whoa. So whatever I paint now is visible. So what I want to do is have this guy, so I'm doing it a little bit there. I want to have it like his face is super visible and the rest is more of a splatter effect. So you can see I got this nice big brush there. And that is that is pretty cool. So some of the tricks that I've used is sort of like just going over once there and then making the interior more solid. So that will look uh, over this area will look far more kind of bleedish. It'll like it splatter off. Now up here, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the direction of the brush a little bit. I'm going to shrink the brush a little bit. There's some cool little shortcuts there. That's the uh, left bracket key. Shrinks it and the right bracket key increases the size. Just like that and up the top there. Now I think that looks pretty sweet. We take that away. So that, this looks a little bit this looks a little bit uh, blocky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that black and I'm going to take that out and I'm going to make it white again and shrink that back down and do it kind of like this, and I'm going to use a different brush, I reckon. 
me see which one should I use. This one's a pretty nice one. And I'll just change the angle. Mm, I think I'll change the other way. So like that. There you go. Now be careful, you see right here, you can see that line there, and you can see that line there. So I'm just going to make sure that uh, I just disguise that a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Well, now the only other problem that we're going to have here is that, um, actually I can do this with the up channel. Um, the only problem we're going to have here is that up the top you're going to see this, this, this distinct line. Not so visible here, but uh, when I put that into the InDesign document, you'll come up with a distinct line. So what I'm getting is I'm taking the brush, making it circular, kind of like fuzzy. That's the... Uh, Make sure you press Alt again to get rid of that selection up there, if that happens to you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this black, and I'm just going to fade this. Oh, that's way too, that's way too solid. So I'm going to get the eraser, and let's see, is that going to work then? That was working before, but now it's not. Let's see if I, there you go. So you just had to change the color. Let's say not always an expert, but figure it out somehow or another. Now on this side it looks okay. So I'm just going to fade it off, just blur it off a little bit. And then hopefully no one will notice that little bit. Generally it looks pretty fine usually. Uh, though in the future I'm going to ask for uh, pictures with a higher end of the top. Uh, great, so what I'm going to do here is I oh, make sure to take off that bit. So otherwise it will come up as a big white image. Save as. I could crop it as well if I wanted to. I've got a very long series of pictures here. But um, let's see, it goes under infected design and layout. There you go. So many of them here. Um, you know, it's called alpha zombie head. And then what I'll do in design, I'm going to place it. So I'll select here, make sure I get the art layer. Let's place alpha zombie head. But here, remember you'll see it's a big landscape image, uh, which is not ideal. You can kind of crop that in InDesign pretty easily though. Uh, so let's see what we've got here. Move it over. It's a gigantic image, and see I've actually moved the wrong part of the image. So I want to select it so that it. Uh, you know, I'm just going to transform this. See how it's only. Um, part of the image. See that green part is what I was wanting. Um, so that'll just... Oh, it's the wrong arrow. So you got to watch out for this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back to that. Make sure I've got the black arrow rather than the white arrow. And then I can select the whole thing. There you go. That's what was wrong. All these little traps and tricks. Now if you have a look here, you'll see that this guy looks pretty cool. I might just I'll make him a little bit bigger. So I might go 120 when it stops loading. Probably take off the high, uh, the high display. So that looks pretty cool. But you can see that it's still um, not displaying so well. So what I want to do, let's go to my text wrap here. Wrap around the object shape. No, I wrap around, wrap around object shape. Uh, what I want to do is contour options alpha channel. Check this out. It takes a little moment to load, but it should come up with the alpha channel, and there you go. That is pretty damn cool, if I say so myself. So what I'm going to do now is select the white arrow. The black arrow will not um, won't select this thing. Pretty sure the black cursor, as you're going to think. I'm talking about Lord of the Rings. Or the Hobbit or something, but uh, the black arrow, yes. So uh, here you go, you can see you can change these. There's just billions of them, which is really annoying. Um, and you can see like this little word stuck down here, and, and there's individual pieces uh, here, which is really weird. Um, this word stuck underneath his head, is that a word? Or is that just hair? Anyway, I can't tell, but uh, I think that's just hair. And let's just see how this goes here. So I'm not going to get the entire thing wrapped around. I just want to uh, create some sort of obstacle to these words. 
and you can see that and you can see that because this is very faded in here this has got a low opacity it's not really counting that as part of the image so what I want to do is just move these out until I can uh, get it to register I will show you how that looks in just a second all right and here you can see the final let's have a look at how this looks on uh, high quality oh. now there you can see an edge now that edge if you um, you can also see an edge up here a little bit of an edge so now what do we do right I've just spent all this time um, figuring it out um, what do I do if there's an edge there actually you can see now the edge is actually vanished um, so that can happen too. What you'll notice is there is some little bit of an edge up here, so I don't want that there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back to the original image here, and I'm just uh, going to fade this off. See, I've still got my eraser tool selected. I'm just going to fade this off some more, and I'm just going to feather it down here a little bit so it looks a little more organic. Um, and just because it looked like there was an edge along there before, I'm going to fade this off. What you'll find is that the brush Actually, it's like a big square. And if you do a whole bunch of work on just like pressing a whole bunch of times on that one brush, you'll end up with a square with the major splatter effect in the middle. So it's quite a weird uh, effect there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press uh, save and check this out. Go back to the other image. Select this guy. Go to the links. Right. Let's have a look where he is. Uh, uh, look at that. See that there? Update, boom, is now been updated. So I go back, have a look back in again. Oh, look at that. The changes are there. How good is that? So that is one of the cool things about using uh, InDesign and Photoshop together. I use it on Creative Cloud, and I find that that is friggin' such a, just such a massive time saver. I don't have to uh, put the whole image in again. I don't have to relay out the whole thing. Now, if you want to have a look at um, how I've done these little spiky green bits, that's how they look. I'm just going to fix up a little bit here. There you go. So it looks like a hedgehog, um, but it works fairly well, that system, rather than trying to like get every single one uh, out into like a big uh, pizza shape. That's just not going to happen. All right, so I think that's uh, coming up pretty nicely. You know what, what I'll do now is I'll hold this down, go to preview. Pretty cool. It breaks up the page nicely. It might be good to have something over here. Uh, maybe some blood spats or something. Something to... Put a bit of interest there. All right, thanks for watching.